everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Hold on, let me get closer so you guys can see my gains. Definitely making gains, losing fat, gaining muscle, even though I'm a fat power lifter. All right, guys, something I want to talk about for just a few minutes today. This is something I covered before a long time ago in the past. I haven't talked about it in quite a while, and it's something someone asked me, and I actually had several people ask me, and the question they always ask is, hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger, back in the day, he was really big, and of course everyone knows that Arnold used steroids. A lot of it even came out in his original autobiography. And they say, well, how come the pro bodybuilders today are so much bigger? He used steroids, they used steroids, he had good genetics, they have good genetics. And this is some misconceptions here, and this is, this is not anybody's fault. A lot of people who are new to the game are ignorant of these things and they really don't understand and they don't know what has actually transpired over the last few decades in regards to that because it's not talked about openly with magazines well muscular development does but a lot of the other magazines don't and muscular development does actually give a lot of guys have talked about their specific stacks of what they're using in the magazine but people don't know this stuff and they don't realize that when you, you look back and you talk to older guys from Arnold's era I remember Sergio Olivier said jokingly, but he wasn't really joking. He said it in an interview when he was talking about Mike Menzer. He, he said something along the lines of Mike Menzer used like two and a half grams a decade. I know someone personally, and this person has asked me never to say their name with this story, and I'll honor that because this person is pretty famous in the industry, that when they were talking with Arnold in person at the Arnold Classic, like it, behind the scenes because this person is an industry insider, he had asked Arnold, he goes, asked him just out of curiosity, you know, how much D-ball did you really take? And Arnold told him, laughed about it and said, I honestly don't know because I never counted. I just would swallow a handful of them. So he would said he would just pour them in his hand and just knock down a whole handful without even bothering to count. He doesn't even know what his doses were, at least on that when he was trying to get bigger. So the, the question starts to become... If these guys were maxing out their androgen receptors, because they clearly are, I mean, those type of doses, there is no further gains from anabolic steroids once your receptors are pretty much saturated. And the kind of doses a lot of these guys have hinted at and stories have come out like that of using, they were saturated. They, those guys, Mike Menzer, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, all those guys got as big as you can possibly get off of basically activating the androgen receptor. That's it. That, those are pretty well the size limits because they ate enough, they trained their asses off, they had pretty good training programs. Some of their training was harder than what a lot of the pros do today. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is the technology, medical technology, drugs have improved. Now, the anabolics themselves haven't actually improved. The best stuff back then is still the best stuff today. The top guys still use the same stuff. The issue is that there are other anabolic compounds out there that tons of pro bodybuilders are using and they started using them conservatively at one time and the doses got bigger and bigger and bigger and the bodies got bigger with it. And it's things like the, one of the two biggest things that, that it gave the size that we have today is the invention of synthetic human growth hormone, which is now used at very, very high doses by a lot of top pros. It's, some of them, it's like what they spend on it is more than a lot of you make in a full year. That's their annual budget just for that. The use of insulin, which is a very, very dangerous drug, and I do not advise anybody to ever touch it. It absolutely has killed athletes and bodybuilders. And if you don't know what you're doing, it, it's dangerous as hell. I don't give advice on it, even to personal friends of mine. I don't give advice on people using it. I don't advocate it. But... That is a big one. So those those right there account for most of the size and then other stuff coming in like uh, IGF-1, various peptides, and all these peptides are getting really, really popular with your pro bodybuilders now. But when you start doing things like maximizing the androgen receptor through what they're doing with high doses of testosterone and testosterone derivatives, which is what Arnold and those guys are already doing, you start adding high doses of like synthetic human growth hormone at 10 times what the body can produce naturally. People start injecting super physiological doses of insulin. They start injecting large doses of IGF-1, all these things. And then all the sight enhancement on top of it because tons of your bodybuilders up there today who have several inches of muscle in their arms and belts that isn't actually muscle that is either oil, collagen, scar tissue, things like that from different things they inject into their body to 
swell the muscles up that isn't true growth is actually the norm. It's not the exception, it is the rule. So you combine all those things together, that is why the guys today are bigger than they were in Arnold's era. It's, it's not as simple as, well, they used anabolics back then, they used anabolics today, but they used so many other things combined with the anabolics versus just the anabolics. But it does give people a more realistic idea of the guys from Arnold's era, the golden era there, that, that is basically the limits of how big a bodybuilder with good genetics is going to get purely through, through androgens. So hopefully that clarifies that and people understand why there's this big gap in size of why bodybuilders today are holding 50, 60, sometimes more pounds of muscle over what Arnold Schwarzenegger and his contemporaries were holding. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Not bicep, yes.